Sales last year were down by 40 to 50%. Why? In this video, I want to unpack five controversial opinions I have for 2024 that will also explain part of the downfall of the market and what we need to do moving forward. Hi, I'm May and I help makers, artists, and designers make a living from selling their handmade products online. Let's just get right into it. First, I believe no one cares about handmade anymore. So I started working with an online retailer and they created an amazing video promoting my work. It got over a million views here on YouTube, which is amazing, right? But of course I had to check the comments and there were so many people complaining about the price. I made this necklace with my bare hands. It was stated, it's handmade. Even the video itself is trying to educate people on how if you try to do it yourself at home, it wouldn't look as good. Now, this isn't the first time I've experienced this, unfortunately. I actually started learning this the more I got into more mass market commercial ways of selling my jewelry, namely through selling wholesale to retailers. Back in the day, I used to do so much more wholesale. I did trade shows that cost thousands of dollars to do, and it was always so disheartening to see feedback from buyers that many people still believe that handmade equals low quality and not worth a higher price. I remember one time I had a buyer tell me they didn't believe my products were handmade because the quality and the presentation of everything I did looked too professional. It just goes to show you what people expect handmade to look like. But this is also why in my course, A Sale Day, I coach my students. I'm always harping on and on about how handmade is no longer a sole reason why someone buys from you. It's the cherry on top, you know? It makes you feel good that you made the right choice buying. But first and foremost, your product has to be what the customer is looking for. Nothing else matters until that condition is met. The truth is, and I don't say this to be mean or rude, but strangers online don't care that we have poured our heart and soul into making a product unless they're our moms, right? So if you've been primarily marketing your products as being, it's handmade, you need to start thinking beyond that and talk in terms of what customers really care about. And it takes research to figure that out for all of your unique individual products. But for example, with my scented food jewelry, Tiny Hands, People are searching for a unique and fresh gift idea, usually for little girls who like cute miniature things. So in my marketing, that is what I lead with. Once I have someone's attention, then I continue to educate them on the fact that my work is handmade, which helps them see why my prices are the way they are. So you will have to figure this out for your own product. And once you do, it is going to sell so much better and easier. The second controversial opinion I have is that AI is only adding more noise to the online space. The problem we all have is there is an impossible standard we need to meet to post frequently on Instagram, then get on TikTok and make video content, then write blog posts every week, then send out weekly emails. It is a lot of content we are expected to create in the name of getting our product seen and hopefully make some sales, right? This isn't whether or not I'm for or against AI, but me just observing that what AI does is make it easier for people to create content, right? Social media posts, product descriptions, blog posts. And if you've used AI, it is pretty hit or miss when it comes to the quality of its content creation. So what's the new problem? Now we have way more content than we ever had before. And a lot of it isn't any good because it was AI generated. If you thought the market was saturated before, now it is even more so because of AI. As a result though, I do believe that what this means in the coming years is that handmade will start to have more value to people because it's harder to make handmade products compared to say AI art or digital products or even print on demand stuff. Because customers will be frustrated with all the same products they're seeing over and over again, created by technology so easily, and the market will be filled with sameness that the unique handmade items is what will stand out really well later on. So if you make handmade products, keep sticking with it, okay? Don't give up. And if you like videos like these where we talk about everything around how to run your handmade business, subscribe to my channel. That leads me to my next point, which is the definition of handmade. And the bigger question is, what should be allowed to sell on Etsy? Etsy used to be a platform for handmade only products. Then they started allowing in stores that sold products that weren't manufactured in house. So like print on demand stores, then more and more digital products started flooding Etsy. The Cambridge dictionary definition of handmade is made by a person using just hands or tools, not by a machine. By that definition, 
AI art, digital products, and print-on-demand products should not be allowed to be sold on Etsy. Frankly, I think if Etsy just got rid of all digital products alone, it would fix a lot of our problems and balance out the Etsy economy. Etsy's customers are really struggling to find good products to buy right now, which I'm sure is a big motivation for Etsy's new gift mode feature. It goes without saying that they also need to get rid of dropshippers and mass manufacturer products, but it is also a lot harder to make an effective algorithm to find shops to close down. But there are just too many shops to do it manually. so. I think Etsy needs to make a call, make a bold move if they want to stay relevant. If you think Etsy should go back to being handmade only, like this video. Now, I think a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this, but the very tools we love and use every day is the exact reason we are all in deep doo-doo. I'm talking about Etsy tools like eRank and Everbee. These tools make it so easy for people to find sales data on best-selling products, which make it so easy for people to just copy you. There is such a huge toxic culture of IP theft and infringement right now because people are not being diligent about innovating on existing ideas. Instead, they're simply tracing line by line what is already working for other sellers and then calling it their own. It's terrible. Now, we love using tools like eRank and Everbee, but this is a really good example of how we can't have good things because of all the bad actors out there who use them for bad intentions. People who just want to make a quick buck and who have no integrity at all of the creative process. I'm not saying we need to get rid of these tools, but if we make it a bit harder for people to find good products to sell, competition will be less saturated and that will fix a lot of the problems we have right now with the surge of competition in the last few months. Next up, and this is going to actually make a lot of you feel the pressure taken off your shoulders. But I believe a big part of how to keep our business afloat during tough times right now, it's not with doing more, right? It's not about more marketing, more social media posts, more content, more blog posts, more product listings. More is not what we need right now. There is already way too much content out there already, right? We just established that. Instead, what we need to do is focus on how to do better at converting the attention we are already getting but at a higher percentage. In other words, focus on improving our sales conversion rates. When you work on this, you don't have to worry about trying to get as much traffic and views as possible because we just said that has become very hard to do, right? And when you do this, it is about being able to sell more without working more. This is something I've been doing the last several years and really focusing in on, especially so in my own businesses in the last few months with some really incredible results. Like how just by removing one thing from my cart page, which took me less than five minutes to do, increased my sales by two times. And I didn't have to do more marketing it, and it literally only took me five minutes. There are so many other small tweaks like that that you can do in your business today that don't take up hardly any time to do. And that's what the Sell More Work Less Challenge is all about. Yes, I am hosting a free five-day challenge that's starting soon that will talk about all sorts of these small tweaks that can make a big difference in your business. I haven't been this excited about something in a long time, and this is going to be so much fun. There are going to be a ton of opportunities to win prizes. There's a free workbook, there's games, there's interactive daily live training and Q&A with me. So if that sounds interesting or exciting for you, and if you think it will help you grow your sales and business this year, I mean, it's free. So you do not want to miss this challenge. There is a link to sign up here as well as in the description below. So go sign up now before we start because the challenge will close down after a couple of weeks and you do not want to miss it, okay? So click the link in the description and sign up now.